morning. It's Friday, October 4th, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Making Sense in a Storm, and our scripture is Psalm 37. Don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong, for like grass they soon fade away, like spring flowers they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust Him, and He will help you. He will make your innocence radiate like the dawn, and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. Be still in the presence of the Lord, and wait patiently for Him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Stop being angry. Turn from your rage. Do not lose your temper. It only leads to harm. For the wicked will be destroyed, but those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. I watched a TV show recently where a tsunami swept over the California coastline. I've seen plenty of video and still shots of the damage such a storm can produce. But this dramatization staged everything to help the viewer experience the raw power and the arbitrary selection of whose life to ruin. It was memorable, which I'm certain was the director's intention. It got my attention, and for the next couple of days, sleeping was more difficult. As I reflect over the number of tsunami-like waves that have appeared in my lifetime and changed everything, it gets a little mind-staggering. Vietnam, the assassination of President Kennedy, landing on the moon, fall of the Berlin Wall, these and many more are epical game changers. Another tsunami game changer was the 2015 Supreme Court decision allowing same-sex marriages, undercutting 2,000 years of church teaching, not to mention six millennia of common sense. That nine-judge ruling set off a wave of celebration and anger across the continent. I certainly didn't and still don't agree with the decision, but rather than fretting or anger, I've learned, along with the psalmist, to trust God with whatever he's doing, despite how unsettling it all seems. One disclaimer here. While I disagree with the court's decision, and even the idea of homosexuality being good or even normative, I also take my cue as to how to behave towards my fellow human beings from Scripture. I call no person insignificant because of how they were born or how they choose to act. We are all God's creatures. On the other hand, naming sin while loving the sinner puts one in a precarious position. It's easy to be labeled a homophobe if you don't agree with the LGBTQ++ agenda and because of conscience you choose to come out of the quiet background about it. The trick, as I see it, is to put away the anxiety over it, act with graciousness towards everyone, and remember how my sins are no less worrisome to God than those of anyone else. Complex issues are just that. And you run the risk of being misunderstood if you try for simplistic solutions. However, I don't think you can do better than the simple loving principle the psalmist lays down. Trust in the Lord and do good. In this case, there are a lot of moving parts in human interaction when it comes to that last phrase, do good. The list begins in the psalm also. Be still in the presence of the Lord. Wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Stop being angry. Turn from your rage. Do not lose your temper. It only leads to harm. For you today, it's not wrong to speak up, but if you would do that, remember to be still in the presence of the Lord first. Exercise patience without worry or anger. If God gives you something to say, there won't be any room for self-righteousness. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.